Hi everyone, it's Karen here, and I'm really excited to be here. I was trying to think of an idea of what to do for my next live show, and I figured that what better thing to do than to do a show just on flowers. And instead of like doing a layout or anything like that, just to basically focus on techniques, tips and techniques that you can do with flowers. I mean, Prima is well known for her flowers, and you can see here in my box, uh, lots and lots of flowers from Prima. So what I do is whenever a collection is old or, um, or just, you know, I have one flower left in the box, I end up, sorry, in my package, I end up putting them in this box. I end up emptying these out in this box, and I use these whenever I'm missing a flower, or I use these for my classes. And I figured I could use them today to show you some techniques that you can do with the flowers that you buy from Prima. Um, so I am going to get started and just show you some of the really cool things you can do. And as you can see, I keep on loving just putting my hand in here. I want to do that, but I'm going to put this box aside because I really need to show you uh, what to do with them. So the first thing that I love doing, and this is very common but this is one of the main things that we do with flowers is basically layer them so i'm gonna grab a few flowers just to show you what i mean and what i mean by layers okay don't need leaves right now although prima makes beautiful leaves that's not what i need right now okay so one of the things i love doing is layering flowers right so I often talk about this in when I do layouts or projects where I use the bigger flowers at the bottom and then I kind of layer them on top of each other to create little bundles of things. So I have, for example, an example here where I have three flowers and they're layered in between papers. This is the layout that I did recently in another, um, in another show, so you can go watch this before. But what I like doing is that like, I like layering the different flowers and creating kind of like a 3D effect. So I find that that's really, really, really helpful to create that 3D look that is so nice and that you can do. Now, this, the flowers themselves are very much 3D, right? They have layers on their own. So you can fluff them up and you can just push them to really create a really um, big flower. The other thing that Prima also has is sometimes they have these type of flowers, and I'll show you, where they are just basically single petal flowers. And these also can be layered on top of each other. So you can layer on top of one another and you can create different colors with it, right? So it looks really nice as well. And you can create these things as well. So there is different ways that you can do the layering. You can do layers of actual flowers or you can do layers of actual single plain flowers or let's say, um, and then you can just put a brad in the middle or a pearl or something like that, which is another technique that I'm going to show you later on. So these are fun to do. And that's basically one of my simple techniques, but I want to show you some other ones that are really great. So the other technique that I really like doing, and that is sometimes when you come, like, you know, like let's say the Prima comes in a package like this. This is the package of the flowers that you have. Well, <clears throat> what what would you do like you know if let's say you don't have enough of the same color sometimes I want to have let's say three colors the same color to create that triangle uh, thing that you do on layouts and I only have let's say two black flowers well one of the things that I like doing is I carefully separate the flowers so that's one thing that you can do as well is separate the flowers so that way you can work with it. So for example, okay, you have this flower now is a separate flower from everything else. So let me show you what I mean. I mean, this is a layout that is already done, but let's say we needed the three black flowers and I want to put one here. And then this one, I can really tuck in underneath, for example. So it will not even show that I, that I ripped it up. And that way you can really see um, the black in this area as well. And then I have a third one, so I could just like kind of tuck it over here. So that gives me that triangle effect and you only use two flowers. 
You could even only use one flower. I could go and separate this even more, okay? Let's say you only have one flower of the color that you want. You could just do this, put this one here, and then put this one on the other side. So it's as if you have three flowers, but in reality, you only have one flower that you use on three corners. So it's a really great way to actually um, save, uh, like, you know, save your flowers. If you're hoarding your flowers and you don't know, you don't want to use them all at once, don't be afraid to actually uh, separate them like this. Now, the other solution that I had, and that is the same thing. So going back to the same flower, okay? So separating them is great, but another solution that you can do is basically cutting them. So this is the third tip that I usually have. And the same idea, let's say you separated this one, okay? And this one goes here, but you want to have a layered one of this. I cut it in half, and the same idea, I can tuck it in underneath, and it works perfectly like that. You can tuck in things underneath, or let's say you want to tuck it in underneath another flower. So that's what I like. Um, that's what I like doing, and how I. This is a technique that saves you a lot of time and money, and you can reuse the flowers. You can use the same flower over and over. So that's a really good tip as well. Now let me go now. Move this away. And I want to show you something else. So this is my fourth technique. And it's something that I love doing. Let me grab a flower that will show this better. So I'm going to grab something like this, OK? These are white flowers. And what I like doing, oh, there's also a blue flower here as well. And what I like doing is that I like spraying them. So let's say you have a flower, but you cannot find the right color for this flower. So all you have to do is just basically take the flowers and spray them in the color that you want. So you can use the color bloom spray and make it blue. Or you could use um, things like a mica powder that goes inside the uh, spray bottle and make it gold. So basically any color works. How cool is that? And you can even color things that are already colored, right? So you can make them with designs. This one has a design. So anything goes and you can just make basically anything anything that you want to match the rest of your project. So that I really like. It's a really great tip. It's a quick and easy thing you can do and really, really effective. So that's really good as well. Next, uh, another great idea. And let me just put some flowers aside, is, hold on, let me find some more flowers here. I'm going to fly and find a bigger one. Is painting them. You can actually grab paint. This is the metallic paint. Any acrylic paint would work. And you could paint with them. So you could paint even just the edges. But OK, you can paint the whole petal. Or you can just paint just the edges in any color that you want. So again, this is a great way to do to match the flower to what you want. You can even paint the center. So it looks really cool. And you can paint it with different colors. So you could do like, for example, orange here, and then add the, the maybe a, a red on the outside, and you can make it any flower that you want. So that's really, really great. Um, so. Here we go. I'm going to finish just doing this just to show you what I mean. Okay, I'm not doing a great job painting, but I just want to show you that it's possible to basically paint the flowers. So that's my next tip. Now, another fun one that I like doing, and let me show you. Hold on. Let me put this aside for a second. Okay, let's take this one. It's good to show this to you. And that is basically you can stamp on them so let's grab something like this this is like a little stamp from the dare to dream stamp collection from finnabar so you can stamp writing on it you could stamp a butterfly on it i have a butterfly thing somewhere around here and you can make your own like basically design on the flower how cool is that so you can make you know how sometimes they sell the flowers with the actual like 
stamp on it. So look at this. You can actually make your own stamped image. So if it's something a little bit bigger, for example, or even one of the leaves, I could stamp, let's say, a butterfly on it or a gear or whatever it is. So let's see. Let's, let's try for the fun of it. Okay. And you can have a butterfly on it. How cool is that? So that's really... Um, <clears throat> that's really a good idea to do as well and I really like doing that because you can add so much texture to your flowers as well um, okay the next one it's a few techniques at once and if you see some of the prima flowers already have this on so for example you see the fine glitter here on this one this one I didn't add but it was done it was uh, I, I, it was done already like that this one has the glitter in the center but I can show you how it can be done if your flowers don't have that. So let's go, let's grab one like this. So there's a few things you can do. So I like using soft matte gel for this. You can also use the glossy one. Either one would work. And I took some different things. I took some glitter. I took some... Oh, this is also glitter, but this one kind of makes it more like Christmassy, so I'll give you that. There is these thicker beads, and I also took micro beads, which I don't see where I put. What did I do with the micro beads? Mm, okay, I'll grab them in a second because I thought I put them here. So what I like doing, so I like basically dipping. There's two ways of doing this, sorry. Let me just say it this way. You could add the soft gel to the edges of your flower or in that case to the center of the flower so both ways would work and then you can start adding whatever you want to it so it, whether it is beads which I'm doing right now or you can add things like glitter and I'll show you in a close-up so you can actually add the glitter in the middle I prefer dipping my paintbrush in the gel first and then dipping it in the actual beads. I find it easier to place on top, but you can do either way, whatever is easier for you. And then it dries up and it creates that really nice effect on the edges. Now, um, when you're doing this, it's gonna show up as white because the gel looks white, but it dries clear. And if you do it with the glossy gel, it will show glossy. So. I like prefer using the matte gel, but it's that's just preference. Now, for example, if you want to do, hold on, like kind of like a like a shimmer, I'm eh, sorry, um, a see-through glitter. It's hard to see this, but you could add the see-through glitter and make it look like snow effect. And it's really hard to tell because it's clear, but it will dry that well. It will dry clear, and I'm going to let this dry while I talk about the other things. Hopefully, it will dry enough that you can see it. And I'm using the same flower and uh, to do this. Now, the other option is I have this, these um, crystal beads, and I'll show you this on the other side. So, again, the same thing. It will look clear, so it will be hard to see. Um, the last one I wanted to show you, hold on. So, these are the micro micro beads. They're the tiny ones, not the, the, like, and they're really cute. I really like using these. Those are my favorite. And I'm going to use, now let's use a different flower. Let's see, just to show you. Um, so this one will have a little bit of the microbeads in the edges. So there you go. Like, so it's really hard to tell. These are so tiny that it's so hard to tell. But I really like adding the micro beads because they add like a tiny little like accent or effect to the background. So let me just add a little bit more and hopefully it will dry so I can show it to you. So there we go. So I'm going to put these flowers a little bit aside here so I can go to the next technique. Um, you could also, if you find the gel is too thick, you can water it down a little bit. It will still stick because these are all water-based products, so it will work as well. Um, the, other, the other thing that is really fun to do, let me see what's my next one. Oh, yeah, so the next one, let me just close all these first because 
uh, I don't think I'm going to be giving them the right. Okay. So I'm just going to close these. Somebody mentioned actually embossing the flowers. That wasn't one of my the ones on my list, but I think that's a really great idea. If you want to do that, that's a great idea to put a little bit of embossing powder at the edges and then dip it in the embossing powder. Sorry, put a bit of embossing ink at the edges and then dipping it in embossing powder, that would work really well as well. Okay, let me just now pick another set of flowers to show you my next technique. So one of the things I love doing in my layouts is adding kind of like a, I used, I used to use gesso, but now I use paper texture paste to just create texture at the edges of the flowers. So for example, if you're doing a winter layout or anything winter related, then it looks like snow. But if you don't, what it does, it kind of matches everything to the background. So I like adding this to the edges. And you can do this with many different things. You can do this with many different pastes. I love using the white one. And what I do is I basically go around and create that texture and then when it dries, it looks like um, it was part of the flower. So I really like that because of it. So there you go. You see how cool that looks? So it gives it like a really good uh, effect. And I, use, I like using this in um, all of my layouts. So I end up finishing my layouts usually with that. So I like that as well. Now somebody mentioned this before, and I like doing that as well. And one of the things I love using flowers, besides embellishing the, them on layouts, is embellishing them on projects and covering them with gesso. So I'm going to show you an example of that. So this was done in my last class. And now you can see, these are the Prima flowers. Now, the rest are regular embellishments, but these ones are specifically Prima flowers. So what I do is you cover them with gesso. And then you can go ahead. This was specifically black gesso, and they become really hard. So clear gesso or white gesso would work as well. It's best to do it with a heavy gesso. And you see they become really hard. And then you can add anything you want, metallic paint, waxes. So basically anything that, um, anything that works well with, uh, with the flowers, anything thick, will harden them and will make it really nice. OK, so that's another technique. And it's really good. So you save yourself your flowers. Anything that you save that, let's say you use the package of flowers, but you have one left that isn't, doesn't really match anything, do what I did and add them to the box. And then eventually you can use these to embellish different projects that you may have. So that's good as well. Yeah, artisan powder it works as well. You can use um, mica powder if you mix it with paste. So basically there's so many ideas that you can I could run like a million ideas here and there uh, and everywhere, basically. Um, the last one, before I will, I will attempt the thing with the embossing powder. I don't know if it will work because I, it wasn't on my thing, but I don't mind attempting it. But before that, I want to show you one more technique. And this is a simple one. And that is that you can use the saline crystals or little pearls to embellish the flowers. So some of them come like already with embellishments on them. They already have like the pearls, as you can see that, but some of them don't. I'm trying to find one that doesn't. So this one, for example, does not, just has the stamens. So you could go ahead and grab things like this, or even you could use, you could use like a, um, so, you, so you could use a brad or an eyelet if you really want to, not an eyelet, but a brad would be best. And that way you can, you can basically match it to any color you want. So that's a really, um, that's a really fun idea to do as well and really easy to do. Now let me go grab the embossing powder to let's attempt that. I wasn't fully prepared for that, so let's see if it works. I hope this one has ink in them. Okay, let's pick one of them. I'm sure it would work. Okay, let's do the edges, right? So we have to be very careful just to do the edge of it. Any embossing ink would work as long as it is wet. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Let's see how far does it go. Okay, so I'm going to dip this flower in there. I'm sure it will work, but I just want to, there we go, hold on, shake it a little bit. Okay, so you can see that some places have more ink than others, obviously, because that's where, um, 
that's where I added uh, more ink, I guess. But it's, I mean, this is obviously hit and miss. You're not going to get it exact unless you're very, very careful. Oh, actually, an embossing pen would work, like when an embossing ink pen. That would probably work as well. So let's start heating it up. And I should really use an embossing gun, but I'm using the diffuser instead. Oh, yeah, it's working. It's looking pretty nice. Okay, so it did. I didn't know if it fully embossed. You can probably do a few. Ah, oh, so hot. Um, you can probably do a few layers so that you can see here the gold embossing. So I guess you can probably do a few layers. This one turned out really nice. I like this petal because it just did like the edge. So that worked out well. Um, I like the paper texture paste really dries quickly. So that one is basically dry. I'm trying to see. Oh, here. This is one dried a little bit already. You can see the microbeads. Oh, my, my hands are so red from the heat. Okay, so you can see the microbeads there. That came with the flower, but there are the microbeads. So that works well. And the only one, oh, the glitter one you can see in the stamping. So here's the stamping and the glitter. So that is good as well. Um, and you can do these on both like paper flowers and uh, fabric flowers. So they work on both. So that's good as well. So yeah, you can basically use anything. The only one, I, it's hard to tell is with the one that has the, the see-through glitter. It still looks kind of white. I wonder if I dry it a little bit. Hold on, let me dry it to see if I can get it a little bit more um, clear so you can actually see the clear glitter shining through instead of only the instead of only the glue and or the gel that is there. So yeah, the stamping is it's a great way to personalize the things so you can personalize it yeah, with an alphabet stamp. You can get like a bulk flowers like the mulberry flowers um, and you can stamp on them. They're more flat and then you can layer them. So there's just lots of things you can do with the flowers. And I figured that that would be a good way to show you some really fun stuff. Um, any fine glitter would work as well. I didn't get any of the fine glitter, but that would work as well. So any type of glitter would work. So in that way, it's nice. So basically, now you can see a little bit more. Let me just, oh, it's still really hot. Hold on. They get really, really hot. So here is the one with the micro beads, sorry, with the regular beads. And this is the one, you see, you can make it look like snow. I mean, the color is brown as, uh, underneath, but you can see the whiteness of the snow. So, um, so there's just so many ideas. I mean, if you, if I didn't cover some of the ideas, then there's probably other ones that you can do as well. And I'm sure you'll find things to create and do with them. So just, this is kind of like a few bunch of techniques just to get your creative juices flowing and to kind of push you to get out of the box and use flowers in a different way that you haven't used them before. So I really hope you enjoy my show today and I hope you enjoyed yourself. And if you did, please give this video a like or a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. For more inspiration, come uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to the Facebook page for Prima. Prima also has a YouTube channel, so go ahead and subscribe to that as well. And come see me on Instagram. If you find me on Instagram, you can follow all my different um, projects. And also, if you want to um, follow Prima Marketing on Instagram, I mean, it's just nice to have you follow us and encourage because I really we re, I really appreciate every single time that you guys come and and just even press like or even comment and I try to to engage with you as much as possible. Thank you so much and have an amazing day everyone. Bye everyone.